your plants, come to Merrifield Garden Center. We know plants. Good morning, America. Breaking news, dramatic breakthrough. Overnight, North Korea's dictator Kim Jong-un becomes their first leader to set foot in South Korea. A handshake at the border, will it make peace more possible? What's next for missile tests, eliminating North Korea's nuclear program, and that summit with President Trump? The White House responds this morning. Guilty. Bill Cosby convicted of sexual assault after years of accusations from dozens of women. The man once known as America's dad now facing up to 30 years in prison. His accusers overcome in court. Two of them joining us on GMA this morning. Breaking overnight, bombshell new accusations against NBC anchor Tom Brokaw, the former reporter coming forward with sexual misconduct allegations. Inside the investigation, how police solved the Golden State Killer case using the suspect's DNA from past crime scenes and a genealogy website. And this just in, the royal baby has a name. Meet little Prince Louis Arthur Charles, the meaning behind the newborn's new title. Live in Times Square, this is GMA with Robin Roberts, George Stephanopoulos, and Michael Strahan. Good morning, America. Packed Friday morning here. History in the Koreas and a British prince with a French name. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just glad we finally have a name, George. It's been four days, which is two days over the usual time that it takes to name the baby. It is Prince Louis Arthur Charles. We're going to have more of the meaning of that name coming up later in the show. Well worth the wait for that name. Mm -hmm. We will have more later. But we're going to, of course, begin with that break news overseas a remarkable summit viewed live around the globe the leaders of North and South Korea meeting Kim Jong-un the first leader of his nation to enter the South will this lead to peace ABC's chief foreign correspondent Terry Moran is in the region and has the latest good morning Terry good morning Robin good evening here what an extraordinary day thousands of reporters from all around the world here just south of the demilitarized zone to witness this historic and emotional summit just weeks ago this whole region seemed under the looming threat of war but these two men the leaders of the two Koreas in striking symbolism and long talks are trying to bring in Kim Jong-un's words a new era of peace Surrounded by bodyguards, Kim Jong-un emerged from the northern side of the DMZ. Then, looking a bit tense, he strode alone toward the ceasefire line from the Korean War that still marks the border here. A warm handshake with South Korean President Moon Jae-in, and then Kim steps forward, becoming the first North Korean leader in history to set foot on South Korean territory. President Moon asks, you come to the south, when can I come to the north? Why don't you try now, Kim Jong-un says, and hand in hand, they cross back, almost as if turning that fearsome border into just a simple line. It was like that all day, symbolism and ceremony, greeting children who live in the DMZ. They're the future. A traditional honor guard, the shared Korean culture. But there was also laughter. Kim Jong-un cracking a grim joke as the two began their meetings. I won't interrupt your sleep anymore with early morning missile tests, he promised. The two men, so different, seemed to enjoy it all, sitting among the trees alone for almost 45 minutes, introducing their wives. Kim Jong-un's wife, Ri saw ju all smiles. And they reached a remarkable joint agreement, signed and then celebrated with a handshake, triumphantly raised arms, and an unexpected bear hug. Afterwards, Kim Jong-un addressing a world audience for the first time, saying, we are one nation and cannot be separated. We are one blood. And in that symbolism, there was substance as well. In that joint agreement, the two men declared that by the end of this year, they will reach a peace treaty, bringing, bringing a formal end to the Korean War. They will denuclearize the Korean Peninsula and increase economic ties. But the key question, as it always has been, can North Korea be trusted George? Right. Can they actually follow through on getting rid of their nuclear weapons? That is going to be a huge question. President Trump uh, up and tweeting this morning, praising the progress, praising the meeting. He's saying good things are happening, but only time will tell. That also gets to the question of what this all means for the potential upcoming summit between Kim Jong-un and President Trump. 
Well, George, this summit between the Korean leaders was seen as kind of the laying the table for the big deal, the summit between President Trump and Kim Jong-un. And there's no question President Trump will want to hear from President Moon of South Korea what he made of Kim Jong-un as a negotiator. Right now, uh, it looks like it's all systems go, and that summit scheduled tentatively, not no date yet, late May, early June. Yeah, and in fact, the New York Times is reporting this morning it's June and likely to be Singapore. Do we know anything more about the various cities and regions in play? Well, that turned out, the location turned out to be a really delicate negotiation, in part because Kim Jong-un's airplanes are so old, they have a limited range, so they had to do something within a couple thousand miles. Singapore fits the bill. The Americans like it. They didn't want to do it in the Koreas because one side or the other would look subservient. Didn't want to do it in China because China is not taking that kind of role, so Singapore looks like it might well be it. George. Okay, Karen Moran, thanks very much. Michael? All right, thank you, George. Now to that stunning moment in court. Bill Cosby found guilty of sexual assault. The accuser smiling after the verdict was read. ABC's Lindsay Davis has been covering this case from the start and joins us now from Norristown, Pennsylvania. Good morning, Lindsay. Good morning to you, Michael. He hasn't stepped foot in jail, and yet several passers-by shouted free Bill following yesterday's verdict, a verdict that left Bill Cosby with a few choice words for the district attorney, a man who campaigned years ago on this very promise of putting Bill Cosby, who he called a sexual predator, behind bars. The man once dubbed America's dad, now a convicted sex offender, seen here returning to his home outside Philadelphia after a jury found him guilty on all three counts of aggravated indecent assault. Several of his accusers told they had to leave the courtroom after they sobbed loudly following the reading of the verdict. And Andrea Constant, the woman he was found guilty of sexually assaulting in 2004, leaving with a huge smile, embracing her supporters. Mr. Cosby. The 80-year-old Cosby will now potentially spend the rest of his life behind bars, raising his cane in response to supporters as he walked to his car. You're up. You're up. Hey, Don't wait to a stunning fall from grace for the comedian who worked so hard to be considered the ultimate family man. You know how the kids love jello pudding both in commercials and as the revered Dr. Huxtable on The Cosby Show. Let's put on some music around here. Cosby, who never hesitated to issue his own sometimes controversial opinions on social issues, urged young people to avoid prison in this clip from Fat Albert. Now, they're in prison. The prison isn't any fun and it isn't any joke. The prosecution alleged he'd used that upstanding reputation to drug and sexually assault scores of women over several decades, six of them testifying in this case. We are very disappointed by the verdict. We don't think Mr. Cosby is guilty of anything, and the fight is not over. His accusers rallied together on the steps of the courthouse. I think we were all just absolutely stealing ourselves for another mistrial and trying to figure out how we were going to cope with the depression. You could feel the electricity in the air, and when they said verdict, Guilty. oh my God, unbelievable, unbelievable. That verdict decided unanimously by a jury of 12, causing an audible gasp in the courtroom. Cosby putting his head down as the three guilty verdicts were read, then later cursing at the district attorney who argued that Cosby should not get bail, concerned he would flee by flying elsewhere. Cosby responding, he doesn't have a plane, you expletive. The decision comes less than one year after a previous trial resulted in a hung jury. The big difference this time around, six accusers testified, including Constant, compared to only two in last year's trial. The fallout has been swift. Reruns of Cosby's shows immediately taken off the air. Several universities took back honorary degrees. And the judge told Cosby that he has to stay at his home. But because Cosby has several homes, he said that if he is to leave this county, he must be fitted with a GPS tracking device. Sentencing is scheduled to take place within the next 60 to 90 days. George. Thank you, Lindsay. We are joined now by two of Bill Cosby's accusers who testified at the trial, Janice Baker Kinney and Lisa Lott Lublin. Thank you both for joining us this morning. And Janice, let me begin with you. This has been such a long road, 30 years. What went through your mind when you heard that verdict? The first thing that went through my mind is joy and overwhelming tears, sobbing, but tears of joy, but I couldn't stop sobbing. I can only imagine. And Lisa, you were actually not watching television at the time, teaching in your sixth grade classroom? Yes, I was. 
I received a call from my husband. He told me there was a verdict, and I said, well, give me some time, you know, let, let me know. Call me at 11.05 when I'm on my lunch, because I didn't want to be exposed to this with the kids in the classroom. And he must have called me two or three minutes later, and he said, it's guilty, it's guilty. And I just began to shake. My stomach started tumbling, and I didn't know what I was going to do. I was like, I just have to get out of here. I've got to get out of this room. I can only imagine the emotions for both of you so powerful. And Janice, when you testified at the trial, you talked about feeling ashamed, the feeling somehow that this was your fault. When the verdict came in, did that all go away? You know, I, I believe that blame is so ingrained in me for over 30 years that I'm always going to carry a little bit of it. Uh, it just still comes from that place of so long ago when women were always blamed for these things. And I, I think it's going to be a long time before I can ever get that feeling to go away. Although when you were facing that grilling from Bill Cosby's attorneys, you gave as good as you got. Uh, yeah, he was kind of a bully, Mr. Mesero, and I wasn't about to put up with it. So it made me happy to actually give back what he was given to me. And Lisa, what was it like for you to actually face Bill Cosby in that courtroom after all this time? Well, actually, uh, while I was in the courtroom, I truly felt like I was there for my civic duty, that it was my, my responsibility to really let people understand and know what had happened and that he should be responsible for his actions. He was extremely pitiful looking and sad and he didn't look like the massive man that he was portrayed as from the past. So it was really kind of sad to see him that way. You know, you talk about your civic duty. After you found out, Lisa, that you were assaulted, you actually found out that the statute of limitations had passed on that crime. So you went to work to actually change the law in the state of Nevada. Abs absolutely. I'm still changing laws in 2017 and going back in 2019. There's two years civilly for an adult to be able to sue and it's it's not fair. Some people aren't even done with feeling um, the guilt and the, 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 that, that they shouldn't have any guilt but they're they're not even aware of their emotions or feelings yet so two years is not even a start for them to, to even recover from this and to be able to go back and necessarily sue their perpetrator. Janice, Bill Cosby's now 80 years old. He could spend the rest of his life in jail, but the judge has a fair amount of latitude in sentencing. What do you think is the appropriate sentence now? I believe that it's essential he spend time in jail, and I, it wouldn't break my heart to see him spend the rest of his life in jail. He, did, he sentenced many women to years and years of therapy and inner jail. Um, I just think he deserves to spend uh, an appropriate time, and if that means dying in jail, it won't break my heart. Your thoughts, Lisa? I agree 100%. He's responsible for his acts. He needs to pay for his acts by going to jail, and maybe that will give some of the victims of his an opportunity to heal a little bit, to know that he's responsible for his actions, even if it wasn't in their particular situation. He's still responsible, and everyone knows the truth now. Thank you both for your time this morning. Thank you, George. Thank you. And we are joined now by two of Bill Cosby's publicists, Andrew Wyatt and Ebony Benson. Thank you both for joining us. And Ebony, let me begin with you. You just heard those, those victims right there saying it wouldn't break their heart for Bill Cosby to spend the rest of his life in jail. Your response? I think it's very interesting that she chose words such as massive man, especially when she gave in her testimony that her and her friend Judy were actually on their way because they enjoyed big black men. Um, and well, again, really in Janet Baker there? Kenny's testimony, she stopped, talked about getting effed up and sleeping with Bill Cosby. Again, we're talking about accusations that have not been followed up with any evidence besides what our defense attorneys did. There was evidence completely, blatantly, selectively overlooked by the Commonwealth in this situation. Again, women who knew who this man was, they had an agenda, they sought their agenda, and then years later come with accusations because they woke up and saw someone on TV 
again, of course they would feel that way. Of course they would feel that they want him to spend the rest of his and, life in jail because that's been the agenda that they set out for, and, and Ebony, set out I, with I, from the beginning. A jury of Bill Cosby's peers looked at all the evidence, decided he was guilty of those crimes. Uh, An Andrew, why, where, is, where is Mr. Cosby this morning? How is he feeling his reaction? And just to finish, follow up on that, you said a, a jury of his peers. They also had a, a, a huge amount of prejudice and bias by having five women also testify to crimes which he was not on trial for. Go and, ahead, and, and, and you asked me how's Mr. Cosby. Mr. Cosby is right now with Mrs. Cosby. He's feeling great. He's confident. Uh, he's not going. He, although he has been found guilty, he's innocent of these charges, and he maintains his innocence. And he's going to walk around as a man who's innocent because he didn't do anything wrong. What, George, you, say he's say com you say he's comforted. These, what is he comforted by? He, he's confident because he didn't do anything wrong. These are allegations. They are decade-long allegations, George. These women have no evidence. They went to no authorities. They parade these five distractors in to tell stories and talk about the drug habits they had. You have Lisa Lott Lublin who said, I don't even remember if anything happened to me. Uh, I think these jurors got it wrong. You had juror number 11, George, who said before the trial started that Mr. Cosby was guilty and why wait, wait, why even waste our time? Let's just find the man guilty. He said it to three other jurors. Our defense attorneys fought hard to make sure that that juror did not end up in that box. And yet and still, you had a person with a 100 complete bias sitting there, not interested in any evidence that was presented by you the know, defense. So some, yes, they, they heard. Hold on a second. 60, six, some 60 women have accused Bill Cosby uh, of, of various indiscretions of sexual harassment. You're saying all these women, all 60 women are lying? May I ask a question? Since when are all people honest? And since when are all women honest? We can take a look at Emmett Till. For example, since when are all people honest? Well, and, and, and George, this became a public lynching. What they did, what Gloria Allred was able to do, she took a salt and pepper shaker. She shaked out a lot of salt and sprinkled in a little black pepper. And the South came east, and that's what we saw. Uh, the sheer volume well, of people coming forward, that's what they did in order to persuade public opinion. And 60 uh, women not, coming not, forward, not, where I, are the, not, where are the 60 sure. criminal charges? Where are those charges? Yes, well, these women have allegations, but where is the evidence? Where is the proof? Where have they gone to authorities? Where have these authorities found that it was you know, sufficient we, evidence to pursue a the, case? The jury, on the jury top looked of that, at all that. About, excuse me, excuse that, me, excuse me. The jury looked at all that. They made their decision. Thank you both for your time this morning. Michael? All right, thank you, George. We're going to switch the tone a little bit. Go back to some news we started with at the top of the show, and that is the royal baby news. The little prince's name has been revealed. William and Kate calling their newborn son Prince Louis Arthur Charles. And Louis is after Louis, a uh, Lord Louis M Mountbatten, who is Prince Philip's uncle and Queen Elizabeth's cousin. Arthur is, of course, his father, Prince William's middle name. And Charles, of course, is after the baby's grandfather, Prince Charles of Wales. So that's why we have an English baby mm -hmm. with a French <laughs> name, George. You did explain Thank you for solving it all. Oh, so well. Let's go to Rob now. There's more rain coming for the East Coast today, there Rob. Is a bit of a break raining now in Baltimore and Philadelphia, and ice jams melting across parts of the uh, rivers there in Maine with uh, flood watches up there. A dry day for parts tomorrow. Time now for your weekend getaways brought to you by Game Botanicals. Mother Nature. Nothing smells greater than the great outdoors. Especially when you're in accounts receivable. Only one detergent can give you a sniff like this. Try Game Botanicals Laundry Detergent. One of the many irresistible scents from Game. Temperatures will be slow to climb today, starting out in the mid-50s because of this cloud cover and the heavy rain that we've had. But most of the heavy rain should be over with by around 9 o'clock this morning. Some occasional showers through your lunchtime hour, 60 though at 3 o'clock. I think we'll turn mostly cloudy, then a little bit of late day sunshine as we head into the lower 60s. Lower 70s tomorrow with a late day shower, not bad, but cool and breezy on Sunday and hot next week.
Coming up, those bombshell new allegations against NBC anchor Tom Brokaw, his former co-worker now telling her story and what Ann Curry says she told management years ago about Matt Lauer. And we also have those incredible new details in the Golden State Killer case.